your good friend, Sherry Cole, likes to ask the question, how does it feel to be coached by me? How would you answer that question? Who does she ask that question to? To herself. How does it feel to be coached by me? That's right. It's a self-reflection question. Oh. I thought she, I thought she asked her players. No. I was going to go right backstage and say, what the hell's your problem? <laughs> don't ever ask those guys anything like that. <laughs> you don't want to know the answer to that question. Um, there are times when I leave practice and I say to myself, you know what, if I was one of my players today, I'd be really pissed. <laughs> and if they were honest, they're going to go home and they're going to go, Coach Ariama did a shitty job today. And I would know it. And I would feel that, like, man, you're getting paid all this money, you got all this responsibility, and you were terrible today. Like, if you had a real job, like, I don't think coaching is a real job. Like, if you had a real job, like when I worked in a steel mill or when I drove a truck, and, and if I acted like that, I would have been fired like two days later. So it keeps me feeling like I'm never good enough unless I'm perfect. We're never good enough unless we win every game. It's, kind of, it's, a, it's a lousy way to live, don't get me wrong. You know, there's only, the only thing worse than, than losing is winning every game. Well, and I, I definitely want to get into that in just a second. Before we do, uh, Kalina Mosqueda-Lewis, if you were going to just describe her in one or two sentences, what would it be? I got a clip here I want to show you that you haven't seen, and then I just want your reaction to that. You want me to describe her before you show me the before clip? The, yeah, exactly. <laughs> How would I describe Kalina Mosqueda-Lewis? Maybe as good a shooter as I've ever seen. A way better basketball player than people think, not just a shooter. Smart, She's a typical Southern California kid. She's a con artist from day one. <laughs> she is. She tries to get away with as many things as she can, and it started the very first day of practice, her well, freshman year. So I got two things I want to show you. The first one, I asked Kalina. She's a pain in the ass. Thank <laughs> God she could shoot. Uh, I asked her what the best lesson she learned from you was, and here's what she said. Best thing I've learned from Gina is probably you really find out you know, the character you have when things are going wrong. And he makes sure that every single day in practice, it's the hardest thing that you're ever going to face. And if you can beat him, if you can win in practice, you're going to be able to, you know, face anything, whether it's on the court, off the court. He's definitely going to be the hardest person on you, but as soon as you get it right, as soon as you, you figure it out, he's going to be the first person to pat you on the back. Thoughts? All right, I take back some of the things I said. <laughs> now, she's, uh, she's an interesting character because uh, uh, she led our team in minutes played her freshman and sophomore year. I had that much belief in her that she could blow a game open in a five-minute stretch like nobody else could that we had at the time. Uh, but man, when things didn't go her way, she was not a happy camper. And well, I got something for that. It okay. really bothered me. Because you're, you're tough on the freshman initially. Uh -huh. And so I said, what is the best Geno story that you have? And here's what she said. I remember when I was a freshman, probably like second day there, I wasn't talking as loud as I should have been. And that's a huge thing in Connecticut. You need to talk constantly throughout practice. And it's not just talking, it's yelling. And you're a freshman and you're like, I'm saying ball, I'm saying all this, I'm clapping, like I'm talking. It's not the same. <laughs> so I was like, he's like, Kalina, are you gonna talk? Has anybody heard her talk? And obviously no one's gonna say yes. So I'm standing there like, I'm, guys, I talked. And I, I told him that mistakenly. And he was like, you're not talking. You think you're talking? You're the worst teammate in Connecticut history. You're number 23, you don't deserve to wear that. Take that number off your back. You should be double zero. You know what, triple zero. Put one on the front. And I just was like, oh my gosh. Okay, I need to talk. From then on, I am screaming, clapping, yelling, whatever I had to do to make sure that he heard that I was talking. <laughs> uh, that's a good one. Yeah, I kind of, I should go back and use that again. Um, 
No, but here's what she did. Like, we have these, we have these, this saying, obviously, that, that everybody has this thing that they, that, that they say all the time. So one of the things I say all the time is this. There's two reasons why somebody doesn't do something. One, they don't know how to do it. Okay, coach, I don't know what you're talking about. I, all right, now it's our job to teach you how to do that. Once you know how to do it and you don't do it, what do you think the reason is? I just don't feel like it. Give me a, give me a third reason. And I ask them this all the time. Give me a third reason why somebody would not do something they're supposed to do. One, I don't know. Well, we took care of that. Two, I don't feel like it. What's another one? There isn't another one. So from now on, why don't you just put a sign on your forehead when you come to practice? Coach, today, I don't feel like it. So one of the things that happened the second day of practice was Kalena, she like, didn't feel like doing something. So I said, okay, let's line up. And we're getting ready to go to Europe. So it's August. It's not even September or October. So we line up and we go. Like go half court and back, full court and back, whatever. I forget what it was. Ready? Go. So she goes. Smart. She's running. She's looking side to side. She's checking to make sure she's not last, close to last, but she's not going to win any sprints. So she's like sixth out of 12. And just cruise right back. And I said, let me get this right. You're the reason they had to run, and you ran the slowest of anybody on the team. Line up and go again. Everybody. Now they go again. She runs a little bit faster. I go, see? You were holding out on a sun. You're a con artist. Line up again. So now they go, now I don't have to say another word the rest of practice because every one of her teammates hates her right now. <laughs> so uh, my coaching with Kalina was done for the day. Well, and, and so they, they have to survive you initially. Yeah. But then as they get a little bit older, they start to be the ones that orient the freshmen. Correct. Is that right? Yeah, like the way I, the way I explain it is Chris has a pretty good understanding of what I want, obviously, because we talk about it a lot and we, you know, we're kind of in each other's heads. And then our other assistants, Shay and Marissa. So, you know, we're kind of a team. We're a team within a team, right? The four of us. So we're a team. Chris and I are maybe the captains of the team and then Shay and Marissa. So we're a little bit of a team. Now our upperclassmen, our seniors and our juniors, they're part of another team. And they know that they're pretty responsible for a lot of stuff. So we spend a lot of time coaching our seniors and our juniors. And now our younger guys, freshmen, sophomores, they know they're part of a small team of guys who don't know anything and are going to get blamed for everything. So all these teams that are operating under one big umbrella, everything has to trickle down. So we coach Shay and Marissa, we coach the upper class guys, coach the younger guys. And then as guys move up, they take their turn coaching the younger guys. So there's no ever, there's never a sense of, we don't know what the expectation is, coach. No one ever told us. Yeah, they do. They tell you every day from the minute you step on campus. And there's always someone above you that you feel like you're accountable to. So you don't want a freshman going, I'm accountable to Coach Oriama. That's too far away. They know that there's a junior that's on their butt every day that you're accountable to that guy right there. And it's very clear. I, I observed a practice of yours in March, and it was right before a vicious snowstorm. We had to drive through the night to, yeah. to Richmond. And this happened the next day, and I think it speaks perfectly to what you're talking about. Where do you get all this stuff, man? Hey, man, we, we do our homework around here. Damn. So this is from the HBO series. It's been said in sports that the very best will always find a way. 
and in stores Connecticut last week. In the midst of a nor'easter that stranded their coaching staff at their homes, the Yukon Huskies lived up to their name in unexpectedly literal terms. Making their way across campus through wind, sleet, and snow to their team facility. Where once inside, warm and dry, they held a practice on their own. You know we could put them all to shame. Now isn't the time to play it safe. Isn't this the reason why you came? So, baby, don't you let it go to waste. Let's have a great day. We're going to be in and out really quick. Um, no coaches, so we really just got to rely on each other to keep everyone going the right um, intensity level. Let's get it. Get yeah. done. Together on three. One, two, three, together. together. It's been a battle of just being able to be consistently at a, a higher level and it doesn't necessarily matter if the coaches are here or not. We gotta take care of business either way. This was good for us to learn how to motivate ourselves. It seemed like everyone wanted to be here, everyone had a lot of energy, and we got things done. The videotape would show an abundance of action and adrenaline. Strong make, danger field make. While the scorebook would record an all-time Husky record in a Gino Oriema designed team-wide scoring drill. So, like, is that normal for you guys? Well, we have a new administration up at school, and they, they tell you that, you know, when school's closed, they don't want you driving up there because, you know, some liability nonsense and whatever. We never... <laughs> I mean, who doesn't go to practice just because it's snowing, right? And the second thing, that's not something I would want to show recruits. <laughs> guys going to practice like this, hiding okay. from the snow. <laughs> that's not the winning edge, right? I don't think. So we told them, I said, look, guys, we can't come up to practice, but we need to get a workout in because we can't take, you know, two days in a row off. We got a game Saturday, whatever it was. So um, how early do you guys want to go? You know, they said, oh, we'll go. I said, how about 7 o'clock? So you guys get it out of the way because snow's going to get even worse. So I said, yeah, all right. I said, so I said, you guys, you know what we got to do. Yep, we got it. So they came out, 7 o'clock, put their two hours in and went back and... I felt pretty good about it, and I've, you know, I didn't even go back and watch the film either. I didn't even watch the film, because I knew, I knew they did what, I knew that there would be a lot of stuff that I would say, oh, you know, I'm not happy about that or that or that, but. That looks a little different than what I saw. Of when, course it yeah. does. <laughs> it better. That's right. Otherwise, what do they need us for, you know? <laughs> uh, and we're lucky, too, you know, like, we have a lot of managers, you know, we have a lot of people, so they take stats on everything so every shot every kid takes the entire practice everything we do it gets recorded you know so at the end of the week when i say to somebody this is what happened well how come i'm not playing because you you can't make shots well coach says i can't make shots no i didn't say anything you didn't make shots it's written right here i didn't make any stuff up so we 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 record everything and we try to give them some feedback and they take it upon themselves to, to get better. And hopefully that's the kind of culture that we've created where you know, they're never satisfied with how good they are. They just want to keep getting better.